Was there anyone who tried to warn us about something that happened but we didn't listen? Who? H.G. Wells said he wanted his epitaph to be I told you so. You damned fools. In The Land Ironclads 1903 he had written about a stalemated war fought by trench warfare that was broken by the invention of tanks, predicting what would happen in WW1. In The War in the Air 1907 he predicted how airplanes would be used in war, including aerial bombardment of cities, and saw his predictions come true in WW2. Ignaz Semmelweis often described as the father of hand washing. In the 1800s he discovered that infant maternal mortality could be drastically reduced by doctors washing their hands between patients. He was largely ignored and his book got absolutely slated. This is supposed to have contributed to him having a mental breakdown and he died in a psychiatric hospital. French General Ferdinand Foch reportedly called the Treaty of Versailles a 20-year armistice, i.e. not conducive to lasting peace. World War II broke out approximately 20 years later. Twelve TRW engineers resigned their positions the morning of the Challenger incident in protest against risking the flight. NASA launched anyway. Should have listened. Harry Markopoulos. He figured out what Madoff was up to, and the sex still blew him off for years, presumably because the proof he was presenting required math to understand. Bismarck warned the ruling German monarch of his time that Germany's status in Europe and the relative peace of the continent would last for only a short time. After his forced resignation, Bismarck said Jaina came 20 years after the death of Frederick the Great the crash will come 20 years after my departure if things go on like this. 20 years later, Germany loses World War I and almost collapses. Pearl Jam warned us about Ticketmaster years ago. Nobody listened, now we're stuck with only them. Edit Colleen Rowley warned her FBI superiors in June 1st that names on their jihadi watch list were taking flying lessons but not interested in learning how to land. Her report didn't get read until October. In 2005, Courtney Love was asked what advice she'd give young, up-and-coming actresses. She said if Harvey Weinstein invites you to a private party at his Four Seasons hotel room, don't go. And for whatever reason, you didn't see her in many movies after that. Every single junior officer working in Afghanistan for the last 20 years who universally called the ANA a worthless POS army and their government a hollow, dead money pit. While not to the degree that it ended up being but Eddie Murphy took a shot at Bill Cosby's holier-than-thou attitude in his comedy special Raw in 1987 during the height of the Cosby show. President George Washington, in his address when leaving office. He warned against the danger of a two-party system in future politics. He felt that several parties on equal footing would be better. Especially in presidential elections. The more legitimate choices, the better. Seth MacFarlane has made fun of sleazy people in Hollywood for years before the Me Too movement. Help I just escaped Kevin Spacey's house says Stewie running naked through a crowd of people. Johnny Rotten attempting to warn people about Jimmy Savile. Cassandra of Troy was pretty spot on about that wooden horse. Billy Mitchell. He predicted a Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in the 1920s and warned the Navy that they needed to spend more money on air defenses and less on ships. Lots of experts warned about the FTX fraud. The writing was on the wall. Idiots chose to ignore the red flags and made huge investments. Common people was lured in by the perceived trust. One of NASA's engineers warned them that Challenger would explode due to frozen O-rings. They ignored him and launched anyway. In college, this was in like 92. Me and my Muslim roommate were watching something on TV about Osama bin Laden. And he said, this guy is determined to accomplish an attack on American soil and it's going to happen in the next 10 years. At the time, I thought he was crazy. That would be a death sentence for anyone. I told him I'd give him all the money in my bank account if that ever happened. I was so sure. Yeah, we all should have been listening to the warning signs back then. The financial crisis that was given by economist Anna Schwartz in 2005. 
She warned that a housing bubble was developing and that it would lead to a financial crisis, but her warnings were largely ignored. About 20-something years ago, I read articles in CBC about Eve teasing in India which was basically men groping women and how it would turn into outright gang rapes if the practice continued to be accepted. David Attenborough, and I don't think we are listening, well certainly not doing enough. Edward R. Murrow warned us about the dangers of the television medium being used mainly for entertainment and how this would lead to an ill-informed population. The guy in the viral video who said leave Britney alone. Ah that Chinese doctor in Wuhan is first that comes to mind. My mother. Of course she warned the 18 years old me about the scumbags I had as friends were going to hurt me one day. Did I listen? No. I was just so frightened of being alone friendless I didn't listen. Then I got hurt badly. I cannot find the clip but about a year ago at a crypto conference a guy went on stage and publicly said that FTX was a huge fraud and we would all see. Sinead O'Connor. Then we called her crazy and mocked her for two decades. Courtney Love tried to warn people about Harvey Weinstein. Johnny Rotten tried to warn people about Jimmy Savile. My gut tried to warn my stupid ass about working with the people I'm working with on my bachelor's thesis. The project got terminated today and now I have to do it again alone. As my gut told me I should have done from the beginning. Isaac Asimov in 1980. There is a cult of ignorance in the United States, and there always has been. The strain of anti-intellectualism has been a constant thread winding its way through our political and cultural life, nurtured by the false notion that democracy means that my ignorance is just as good as your knowledge. TLC warned us about chasing waterfalls but based on my Instagram feed I swear it's fallen on deaf ears. There is usually some warning that a person is going to commit a mass shooting. William E. Dodd the US ambassador to Germany in the 1930s. He tried to warn the Roosevelt admin that the Nazis were out of control and going to start another war, but no one in the State Department believed him. Years later, I believe, Cordell Hull, Secretary of State, said if they had listened to him they may have been able to stop World War II. In 2002 I heard Hans Ritter former chief weapons inspector for the UN explicitly say there are no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, but we seem to be invading them anyway soon, and he was 100 right. Mothman warning about the bridge collapse. The many women who tried to speak out against Larry Nassar and had it get swept under the rug by USA Gymnastics and Michigan State. And Dominique Moschinu who warned us about the Corollis and the corruption in USA Gymnastics and was called a whiner by the mainstream media. Hundreds of girls were molested and there were so many places where it could have been stopped. John Lydon Johnny Rotten tried to warn us about Jimmy Savile in either 70s or the 80s and I think got banned from the BBC because of it. Most bad things that have happened had someone saying why oh this is a problem before it happened. Corey Feldman was on The View or something and tried to tell people that Hollywood is full of predators, and the hosts just laughed at him and tried to make him feel guilty for outing them. Well this thread has significantly lowered my mood. Milo Stewart made of it how it's predatory how men will count down until a child turns 18. Leafy and other content creators at the time gaslit them and sent their followers to harass that kid. Looking back on how many YouTubers were outed as being predators, seems like Milo hit a bit too close to home. That epidemiologist's department that was beefed up with researching viruses diseases during Obama's presidency, so we had a national strategy playbook to help reduce the impact of any mass breakouts of infection. Trump gutted the department, and one of their key materials of research was how to handle COVID. Various friends and acquaintances warned me not to marry my first husband. They were right. Ahem. UK here. Repeated warnings from anyone and everyone that knew what they were talking about that Brexit was a bad idea, and oh look it's massively hurting in multiple areas, and a majority of people now think it was a bad idea. Bowie tried warning everyone about the housing bubble in 08. Coincidentally enough he's currently warning everyone about the coming financial collapse and the same amount of people are listening. 